The future of Undercover Boss Season 12 is still unclear, and fans are dying to know. CEOs acting as new hires at their own companies to learn about employee struggles and organizational problems is a treat to watch, and a great example of social justice. As we're all waiting for answers, we've compiled a list of the top 10 behind-the-scenes facts revealed by the cast and crew. Stay tuned as we take you through it. Starting the list at number 10, The Birth of Undercover Boss. The U.S. version of Undercover Boss is based on a reality show of the same name from the UK. Stephen Lambert, the creator of the show, came up with this idea after seeing how badly the opening of British Airways Terminal 5 went. Heathrow opened a new terminal after a lot of hype and promotion, but the event was ruined by long lines, long wait times, lost luggage, and cancelled flights. This was an epic PR fail. Later, when the company's CEO, Willie Walsh, was asked if he had run into problems like that while flying on his own airline, he replied that he couldn't because people at British Airways knew who he was. Duh! Like the last piece of a puzzle, this answer gave Lambert an idea and some questions. What if Walsh's or any other company's staff didn't know who the CEO was? Would they look at the business the way most people do? Would their experience change the way they do business? As a result, Undercover Boss was born. Next, at number 9, the employees that appear are hand-selected. Fans of the show might have noticed that the people working for the Undercover Boss usually have interesting stories. Reality TV cameras are there to show what the employees go through, whether it's taking care of sick family members, getting over an addiction, or going through some other hardship. This is not a fluke. The show's producers spend a lot of time looking for the right employees' stories to tell and the best ways to show them on TV. They often film more than one employee working with the undercover boss, but only the most entertaining ones are shown on TV. Eli Holzman, the show's executive producer, explained that if two people do the same job in the same way, but one of them has a great story that makes you laugh or cry, while while the other one makes you hear crickets, there's a clear winner. Even though not every interaction the boss has is interesting or touching, the 42 minutes only feature the ones that are. Moving on to number 8, Bosses Aren't Told All It might look like the bosses know what's going on in the show, but in reality they don't know much about how it all works. They only know what the producers tell them. Yes, the bosses do have some say in the show and can choose some things, but the showrunner doesn't tell them which store they'll go to or which employees they'll be working with. This makes it easier to to show how the bosses and employees really feel. One of these happened when a Boston Market employee told Sarah Bittorf, the company's chief brand officer, that he hates employees more than anything else in the world. That caused trouble for one employee as the chief brand officer fired him right away. Another thing that makes Undercover Boss one of the best reality shows is that it has moments like these. Coming up at number 7, Bosses Get to Choose Their Disguise as previously stated, the bosses do have a say in some aspects of the show. In most episodes of Undercover Boss, the producers tell the employees that they are filming a documentary or a game show in which the new employee is trying to win their own franchise. That explains both the new employee and the cameras. But a lot of the time, especially if they have worked there for a long time, employees end up recognizing their bosses. The bosses get to choose everything about their disguises, from their wigs and clothes to their beards. But even after this, the employees sometimes Sometimes know that it's their boss. On to number six, real changes occur. In a lot of episodes, the bosses talk about how they want to change things at work and help certain employees. But a lot of viewers wonder if this is all for the camera. But some companies have made a difference for the better. So it's safe to say this show is impactful. The CEO of Checkers, Rick Silva, started giving bonuses to employees directly instead of giving them to branch managers. In a similar way, Dan DeZio, the CEO of Philly Pretzel Factory, added a new product to their list after finding it in one of their rogue franchises. That could be one of the biggest giveaways of the show, and there are many others. The show's executive producer Eli Holtzman said that it's something that bosses have to be very, very careful with and they often spend a lot of time worrying about it and talking to their employees. You'll often see them meet with the senior staff again at the end of the show to talk about what they've learned, make changes, and plan what they want to do next. Next at number 5, bosses aren't always a fan of the experience. Some bosses love to go through the same things as their employees, but not everyone likes to put themselves out there and learn new things. Yes, young people can learn a lot from watching bosses deal with things that happen in their own companies, but making yourself vulnerable and learning 
learning the truth about your company isn't everyone's cup of tea. For instance, Choice Hotels International Steve Joyce did not like what he saw on the show. He said that the show's producers were mean to him and put him in situations that made him look stupid and clueless on purpose. He also said that they brought up the death of his mother from Parkinson's disease every chance they got. That was a very traumatic event in his life, which he hasn't dealt with yet. Number 4. One Boss Gave a Very Controversial Reward The best part about the show comes at the very end, when the bosses reveal themselves. They then praise and reward the good workers, as well as impose punishments or firings on the not-so-good ones. The CEO's experiences on the show have led to huge bonuses, offers to pay bills or tuition, and emergency funds for employees. But just like there aren't any perfect employees, there aren't any perfect CEOs either. Take Doug Guller, who is the CEO of a restaurant called Bikinis that follows the same theme as Hooters, more or less. As part of his big reveal at the end of the show, he gave one of his employees a breast augmentation. He told the waitress that if she can make it through six months like a rock star, he'll put her in touch with the best surgeon in town, and she'll get her breast augmentation. Not something that the waitress or the fans were expecting. Coming in at number three, the Lawsuit Against One Boss Armando Montelongo, a businessman who flips houses and gives seminars, went on Undercover Boss. The result was probably very different from what he was expecting. After the episode aired, 164 of Montelongo's former students sued him as a group, saying that his expensive seminars, which were supposed to teach people how to make money flipping houses, were a scam. One of the claims in the lawsuit was that students paid up to $54,000 for advanced programs that were really just a way to get them to buy more products. Montelongo denied the accusations. He told In Touch Weekly that the people who filed the lawsuit decided that hard work all the time is not for them. Now that's one drama Montelongo doesn't want to be a part of. At number two, the aspiring CEO. Belfort Property Restoration CEO Sheldon Yellen got a fan after his Undercover Boss episode aired. Aaron Beck, who works at Lowe's and has a learning disability, liked what he saw. When Yellen found out about his fan, they started writing to each other. In 2017, Yellen went back to playing Tom Kelly from Undercover Boss and surprised Beck at work. And he brought a gift, an autograph book in which he wrote, Now that I have finally met you, I know why everyone loves you. Let's stay in touch and I'll keep cheering you on. Signed, Tom Kelly. Yellen asked Beck if the two of them could work together for a few hours and Beck agreed right away. Yellen stated that he hopes Beck does not overwork him. After all, he's an old man. Finally, at number one, Super Bowl boosted the show's popularity. If a show starts right after the Super Bowl, it's either doomed to fail or sure to do well, and it was the latter in Undercover Boss's case. The first episode received a huge viewership, approximately 38.6 million people. Even after it moved to its regular Sunday night time slot, 13 to 17 million people watched each episode on average. Later, media executive Stephen Lambert called Undercover Boss the most popular new show of the 2009-2010 television season. In these tough economic times, it was clear that the show hit a nerve with its audience and spoke to them. We always love it when that happens. That's a wrap for this video. Did you know any of these facts already? Which fact fascinated you the most? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.